Amen to that. I am yours and you are mine. There is one and one and only that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and we need to make him our portion for at the end everything will vanish and everything will come to an end except Christ who shall live forever. Amen? Amen. So how are we? Amazing. <laughs> That's, I like that. From good to amazing. It's a huge improvement. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so my beloveds, the topic of this evening, again, it's a continuation with the book of Revelation, and now we'll be reading from Revelation chapter 9 and verses 5 to 8 inclusive. I don't know if you've noticed recently, I've reduced the number of verses because I'm trying to keep my talk less than an hour, but um, good luck. <laughs> All right, you ain't going to get what you are looking for, baby. All right, so Revelation chapter 9 and verses 5 to 8 inclusive. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of things like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And all glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Last week, we spoke about the fifth seal, uh, the fifth trumpet sounding, or the fifth angel sounding the trumpet, which is the fifth trumpet. And we said there are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. Seven seals are the promises of God. God is sending his word as his promise to remind his children what he promised us that he will do for us. So when we read the seven seals, we are comforted by the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When the Lord sends his promises, then after the promises, the trumpets will come, which are the warnings. The Lord Jesus will send warnings to warn humanity and more so his children of what is about to come because after the warnings judgment will come upon the face of this planet by the almighty god himself god will judge this world very harshly in the end for those who do not repent for those who do not come back to jesus christ of nazareth for those who do not adhere to his word, adhere to his warnings, they will leave God no other choice but to bring judgment on earth. Just like God brought judgment in the time of Noah, the great flood. Just like God brought judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, LGBT. Just like God brought judgment on so many uh, Sidon, uh, which is south of Lebanon, just like God brought judgment on Babylon, Iraq, God will bring judgment on the face of this planet in the end. So now we are in the warning stage, the trumpets. And last week we spoke about the fifth trumpet. And when the, when the fifth angel sounded the fifth trumpet, John the Beloved said, I saw a star fallen from heaven. And this star, this fallen star had the key to the bottomless pit he opened the bottomless pit and we spoke about that in detail last week and we said that fallen star is satan himself and the bottomless pit is our intellect my beloveds the human intellect satan was given the key to enter our thoughts god gave him that permission because god knows there will be people that will not listen and adhere to his word and God wants to teach his children a lesson. If you do not listen to me, Satan will devour you. 
He's got the key to open the bottomless pit, your intellectual capacity. You cannot stop him, no matter how smart, how wise you are. Please, this evening, I want through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, I want to send a message to all of us. We must be responsible. We must be responsible. We must be responsible about everything we do in life. Don't ever take nothing lightly because you don't know what the consequences of that decision will be. You must be mature. Do not act childishly. We need to be mature, my beloveds. We need to know where we're heading, what are we doing, and what are we trying to achieve. Life is not just having fun. Life is not just going downtown clubbing and dancing and, and going holidays and having fun in this world, drinking the way you wish, dressing the way you wish, acting the way you wish. It cannot continue. God is angry. God is angry. God is angry. Believe me, I don't want to scare you. There will come times very soon to this world. Have your fish burger, I think, for now. We need to be close to the Lord because I cannot guarantee if I'm going to be here tomorrow. I beg you. Don't th take things so lightly and so easily. Somebody calls you, you run. Don't. Somebody offers you something, you just take it without thinking. Don't. Somebody says, do this, and you do it without thinking about the consequences. Don't. Think very deeply and widely before you take a step and before you say something. Think, my beloved. Life is not a joke. Don't play with it. It's not a joke. Don't play with it. Now, when that fallen star, which is Satan, and by the way, uh, let me tell you one thing from experience, yeah? This is a living proof. If anybody says Satan doesn't exist, <laughs> that's a joke. I know he exists. I don't believe he exists. I know. Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> I've been on the other side, my beloveds. So I've been on the other side. I've been on the other side, both sides, heaven and hell. I've, I don't know, I'm feeling today the Lord is talking because people are not listening. People are not listening. I pray the Lord wakes us up all. By His Holy Spirit, He awakens all these sleepy souls and sleepy hearts. I pray. When this fallen star opened the bottomless pit, a smoke came out. It was a smoke that is coming out of a humongous furnace. So when, when, when there is a, a, a very very like an inferno which is a concentrated fire you could imagine the magnitude of that smoke coming of a concentrated fire so when the smoke comes to a place what does it do it turns it into pitch black and it suffocates you that's why we read last week when this smoke came out of this great inferno it actually darkened the sun and the air, it affected the sun and the air. Now the sun, where the light comes from. Now the sun is the light. The light here is knowledge. The knowledge of God was darkened by the smoke. And the air is the source of life. Now knowledge and life go hand in hand. Sun and air go hand in hand. Why? Because knowledge is the decisive moment between life and death. You see, I can gain life through knowledge and I can gain death through knowledge. 
It is the knowledge that decides whether I live or I die. If you choose the knowledge of God, you live. You choose the knowledge of your own affairs, you will die. Because the choice that you make for yourself by yourself will lead you to one place. That knowledge will lead you to one place, to the one who was fallen from heaven and had the key to the bottomless pit. You, it will lead you to Satan's knowledge, not yours. And when Satan controls, what kind of a knowledge is he going to give you? Smoke. He will suffocate you and he will shut the light of heaven to reach you. Sun is heaven. Christ is the son of righteousness. He is the light of the world. So when, when he cuts you off Christ, there is no more air. There is no more oxygen. We will die without Jesus. We will die. So when this smoke came out because of this fallen star, Satan, by opening the bottomless pit, our intellect, the smoke came out. Out of the smoke, locusts came out, grasshoppers, you know, those little things that fly and cause a lot of damage. When you see a cloud of locusts landing on a wheat field, that wheat field is decimated. Now wheat is the source of life. So locusts came out of the smoke to destroy life. Satan gave people knowledge that destroyed life given by God to them. Now, and then verse 4, which was last week, we finished on. It says that when these locusts came out of the smoke, they were told not to harm the grass of the earth, any green thing or any tree, but those men who did not have the seal of God on their forehead. So these locusts that came out of the smoke, which came out of the bottomless pit by Satan, the fallen star, they were told not to harm um, the grass of the earth, um, any green thing or, or any trees, but to go and harm any human being that does not have the seal of God on their forehead. Now we continue verse 5. And they were not given authority to kill them. To kill who? They were not given. So the locusts were not given authority by God to kill those people who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. Not to kill them, but to do what? But to torment them for five months. To torment them for five months. So God still is merciful even in his judgment. He said, don't kill him. Those who rejected me, those who refuse to be sealed by the seal of God, I don't want you locusts to go and kill them. I want you to torment them for five months. Now this bottomless pit, which is the intellect, is what the Lord Jesus referred to as the den of thieves. He said, my house is a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Matthew 21, 13. My house is a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. What is the Lord saying here? What is the den of thieves? The den of thieves is the bottomless pit, is your head, your intellect. This den of thieves has seven entries to it. Seven entries. To the eyes, to the ears, to the nostrils, one the mouth. Two, four, six, seven. These are the seven entries to this bottomless pit, to this den of thieves. Now, the word den is referred to a cave where lions live. A den is a cave where lions live. When we read in the book of Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar threw Daniel, where did he throw him? Into the den of lions, a place where lions live. And lions, what are they? They, they devour the prey. They destroy whatever comes, you know, in its path. 
So the den of thieves is your head, my beloved. And there are seven entries. What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you smelling? And what are you talking about? You need to watch. What you see will influence your way of thinking. What you hear will influence your way of thinking. What you smell will influence your way of thinking. And what you say will influence the way you are living. And this world is full of fragrances. So many fragrances we can smell and enjoy it, my darling. One of the fragrance is Star City Casino. The other fragrance is going out naked, dressed up indecently. The other smell is drugs, alcohol, gambling, women, men, you name it. These are all fragrances of Jericho, the world and its temptations. What are you smelling, my dear, my dear friend, my dear child? Stop, smell the fragrance of God, the incense, the sacrificial lamb of God being slain on the altar, the cross for your salvation and redemption. Stop smelling what Satan is trying to loop you in and destroy you once and for all. Stop doing that. It's not worth it. Don't ever gamble your eternity with a moment of lust and pleasure. Don't ever gamble your eternity for a moment in a room in a Novotel you know, hotel overlooking the Darling Harbor. Do not. Stop going to those dark alleys. Stop dressing up indecently. Stop acting indecently. Stop talking indecently. Speak pure language. Stop using foul words. Drugs are only one thing, poison. Alcoholism, poison. Gambling, poison. Having fun out there in the street, poison. Poison. This is the smoke of Satan. Please be awake and alert. Do not be deceived. Do not. I beg you, do not. They were told to torment those who did not wish to be sealed by the seal of God on their foreheads for five months. Why? You see, what the Lord is saying to those people who will reject him in the end, he's saying, since you rejected my knowledge, which is life for you. You see, John 17, 3, the Lord Jesus is saying, and this is the eternal life, that they may know you, you are God alone, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. How do we gain eternal life? By knowing God and Jesus Christ. So knowledge is extremely foundational. So there is the knowledge of God and there is the knowledge of me. And the knowledge of me, the one who controls this is Satan. The moment you reject the knowledge of God, Satan will feed you his knowledge, which is smoke poison. Poison, my beloveds. What is happening in the world now is satanic. It's Satan smoke. The two years and a bit of pandemics, Satan smoke, he's got the key, he opened the bottomless pit. The viruses are, are Satan smoke, poison. The vaccines are Satan smoke, poison. And everything the world is doing is nothing short of evil knowledge. Evil. And the church is asleep. But I don't think the church is asleep. I wish the church was asleep in an ignorant way, not in a deliberate way. Because if the church is asleep in a deliberate way, woe unto these church leaders. You know what the Lord is going to do to them? Oh, 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 oh. 
We have no idea who Jesus Christ is. You think the secret societies are powerful. You think the Freemasons are powerful. You think Elon Musk and Bill Gates, these little puppets, are powerful with all love and respect to them. But they are puppets, that's the truth. You think they are powerful. Wait, wait and see what Jesus is all about when, it, when the time comes. Whoa. Satan will be a little mouse. He will not know how fast and how far he will run when Christ comes back. And so is the people who rejected Christ. It's all poison in the world. The Lord is saying, I've allowed the locusts to come and harm you for five months. Why? Since you rejected my knowledge and you've gone after your own knowledge and was controlled by Satan who has got the key to your intellect, the bottomless pit, I will make you be tormented for five months because you caused the five wounds in my body on the cross. Two wounds of the hands, two wounds of the two feet, that's four. And one wound of the head, the crown of thorns, five. The spear is not included, my dear. You know why? Because the wound of the spear that was, was inflicted on Christ after he died in the flesh. Now that is rejected by God. You cannot pierce my son after he dies on the cross. And you will answer to that. But they are the five wounds. The head, the crown of thorns, one. The two hands, three. The two feet, five. These are the five wounds. Because you caused those five wounds on me, I will let these locusts to cause five months of torment on you. These are my wounds. Now come, just like I suffered, you need to suffer as well. You refused my sacrifice. I suffered to give you comfort. I was in pain to give you an absolute peaceful life. Since you rejected my suffering, then what is left for you to take? Suffering. If you reject Christ's suffering, you will suffer. If you accept Christ's suffering, you will be comforted. The wounds of Christ, for those who accept them, is comfort. For those who reject them, it's pain and sorrows in the end and gnashing of the teeth. So you'll be tormented five months for the five wounds you've inflicted on me. Um, why does time fly when you're having fun? Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. We mentioned scorpion last week, or it was mentioned last week. We said the scorpion strikes from the tail, from the back. The scorpion, my beloved, is blind, does not see, is literally blind. It senses things. That's why whatever comes in the scorpion's path, it just sting it. It could be a piece of wood, a piece of rock, or a human being. Whatever comes in its path does not differentiate. It actually sends poison in every object that stands in its path. And it strikes from the back, from the tail, stings you from the tail. I pray you never get stung by the scorpion because it is extremely painful. It is extremely painful. Sometimes it's more painful than a snake bite. It's more painful. So, their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. Meaning, those people who reject Christ in the end, their suffering will be beyond, beyond comprehension. Their suffering will be beyond comprehension. Verse 6, in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. My goodness. I believe there are people now, they are wishing to die. Because they are suffering so much, they don't want to live anymore. 
please God take me I don't want to suffer anymore take me away from this life from this world it is too much I can't handle it anymore a time will come it will be definitely literally unbearable by those who rejected God they will not be able to, to, to sustain the pain and the suffering they will wish to die death will flee from them my beloveds that just tells us one thing if I ask anyone what is the most precious thing you have they will say life do you want to die no one wants to die everybody wants to live it's a natural normal human being instinct I want to live of course I don't want to die so life is extremely precious and the most precious things to one's soul but a time is gonna come the most precious thing or gift which God gave you which is life you will ask for God to take it away from you you don't want it anymore because that life will be so much hell you cannot bear it anymore you'd rather die than live a life of hell so the most precious thing you do not wish to have it anymore this is the kind of a situation those who will reject Jesus Christ in the end this is what they will go through my beloveds they will wish for them to die and they will beg God they will beg God to take them away and to stop this life on earth but death will flee away from them they'll wish to die but they won't they won't as we speak now there are souls they are begging God to bring them back to this life again as we speak too late I'm not scaring you but we need to be awakened not asleep and think you know you need to enjoy life you only live once brother so let's have fun what kind of a fun my dear friend you need to be careful do not do anything that will jeopardize your eternity and your destiny do not we need to be very smart and wise and alert and awaken and awaken my beloveds have fun with the Lord go out drink eat enjoy life take the Lord with you don't do anything that the Lord disapproves of believe you me it's very easy let us not complicate things and I can assure you, I can assure you, I can assure you, if you think you can do whatever you wish, then you are free. You are mistaken, my dear friend. Don't ever think whatever you want to do, you're able to do, then you're free. You are a slave if you can do everything you want to do. You are nothing but a slave to that thing and to Satan. The only time you will enjoy freedom to its fullest, the only time you will enjoy true freedom in its fullest, when you do things with the Lord Jesus, in Him, by Him, with Him, for Him, and through Him, everything has to be the Lord. Then you're free. Then you're free. I went out with my friends and we had fun. We went to the city and we drank and we ate and we danced and we went from this club to the other club and we saw all the gazelles on the face of this planet and we enjoyed life and I'll tell you and then what and then what and then what is this why this human is on the face of this earth is that your purpose just to have fun you know why atheists deny the existence of God because they want to keep their conscience at bay and by the way you cannot deny someone that does not exist you can only deny the one who exists 
So when they say we don't believe in God, they are literally saying there is God, but we choose not to believe in this existent God. Because it is illogical and ignorance from a person to say, I do not believe in something that does not exist in the first place. What an ignorant statement to say. You can only deny what exists, my dear friend. So you atheists believe there is a God, but because you don't want to do it his way, you want to do it your way. Therefore, the easiest thing to keep your conscience, you know, injected with the local anesthetic, you say there is no God, so I can do things my way. Like so many people in the world. A guy wants to marry a guy, well, there is no God. Because God disapproves of it. So what's the easiest way? Forget about God because I want to do whatever I want. So when they do whatever they want, they are being controlled by the enemy because the enemy has got the key to the bottomless pit, which is your brain, your thinking, your head, your thought. You've been poisoned. And like with everything else, so they don't think we're picking on one aspect of, you know, life. No, you go out to the club and you say, I'm going to play the pokies. That is the bottomless pit. That is poison. You drink alcohol and you, you lose yourself. That is Satan. You take drugs. That is Satan. You go kill someone. That is Satan. You go hurt someone. That is Satan. You go steal something. That is everything is Satan. God will never do nothing but good. It's very simple. God is the light. When you walk in the light, everything is clear, vividly clear. You walk in the darkness, you don't know what is in front of you. We must come to the light in order to realize who God is and what God expects of every single one of us. I can assure you we did not come out of thin air. We did not come from an ape. We did not come just because something exploded over 13.5 billion years ago. What an ignorant, foolish statement this is. Big Bang. Darwin was an atheist. How can you believe in an atheist? Darwin comes from the round table. These people are Satan worshippers. Do you know what the round table is? Great Britain established it a couple of hundred years ago. History. They don't talk about these things on channel 7, 9, and 10 and SBS. My beloveds, we need to come to Christ. So they were tormented for five months with a sting of a scorpion. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. Oh my goodness, what, the, what awaits this world in the very near future is very difficult times very difficult times very difficult times you know it is so easy for us now to come to church you know thanks to corona or the pandemic another poison smoke from satan these are all lies by the way there is no such thing as pandemics there is no such thing as what they're all man-made fabricated exaggerated believe you me climate change another smoke of satan lies in the make like very clear lies climate change please <laughs> do you think you people just because your car sends some fume out there you're going to destroy the ozone layer excuse me excuse moi I want to send a message to Elon Musk and the likes of Elon Musk. And I want someone to send this video to him. My dear friend, and I'll call you a friend. My name is Murray. 
I am the servant of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the true and only God, the creator of heaven and earth, everything that is visible and invisible. If you think you can send a rocket to Job Jupiter, Mars, and whichever planet out there, all these planets were created by one word that was uttered from the mouth of this Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is God, created you, created me, created everyone, everything on, in heaven and on earth. And sooner or later, you and I, I and you, my dear friend, we will face Jesus Christ, the judge of everyone. And I can assure you, there, no secret society will come to your rescue, no wealth, no treasure, no fame, no power, no prestigious life, nothing will come to your rescue. It is time for you and I and all of us and everyone who thinks they can be God on earth. Your time is now, my dear friend. I am begging you to let go. And even if they come and strip you from your wealth and strip you from your fame and kill you, let it be. Don't ever lose Jesus, my dear friend, like Jeffrey Epstein did and the likes of him. Do you want to know where Jeffrey Epstein is? I'll tell you. I'll tell you where he is. He is begging for mercy. I'm talking as a friend. And to everyone, Bill Gates. But I know some of these rich people, I know what kind of a heart they have. Very evil. Very evil. Whoa. Whoa, very evil. I know. Very evil. They will kill anyone and they would not even blink about it twice. Satan has controlled them so deep and so far, they do not give one penny about no one. They will kill their own mother, their own father, anyone that comes in their way. They don't give one penny. They have been controlled fully by Satan because they made him their God. They worship him. And they offer child sacrifices for Satan. They are the descendants of, the, of those and of the old age. Read in history, read in the Torah. People used to sacrifice pe children and women to, to their gods. It is the same lineage. They are doing the same thing. You see, they called their gods names, but those gods is only one, the false god, Satan. They sacrificed their children in the olden days to Satan and they're doing the same. Nothing is new. And the church is asleep. Woe unto you church leaders. You church leaders, if it's me, let it be me. Woe unto me. Do you think wearing this uniform is a joke? Do you think wearing this uniform is, a, is, is easy? Nothing comes easy. People of the world can clap for you and cheer for you and come and bow before you and kiss your feet and call you holy whatever. <laughs> that ain't gonna do you no good, my dear friend. It is only the Lord Jesus when, he, when you come and bow and seek his mercy. You ask for his forgiveness. You beg him to, to come to your rescue. It is only the Lord will do you good. None of this, neither your throne, nor the cross you've put around your neck. You think by just wearing a cross, now you're a saint? You think by sitting on that throne, now you are a leader in the church? Listen, my dear friend, if you do not make Jesus Christ the crown of your glory, you and I are dead, dead, dead. And your millions and your billions and your fame, I just want to know what are you going to do with it when Jesus calls you and say, come and give an account of what you've done with my possessions. The church, it's mine, not yours. Pope, cardinal, bishop, priest, it's not yours, it's mine. I entrusted you with it. You are a steward. You are not the owner. I, Jesus, am the owner, not you. And every one of us, we need to give an account.
Verse 7. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. You see how the book of Revelation is symbolic, prophetic. Is there a locust that looks like horses? Of course not. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. And notice the word horses, it is written in plural, not singular. Why? Because John the Beloved is trying to tell us one thing here. Horses, pluralistic language. The Egyptians in the golden days, Pharaoh, he had three different chariots. Now chariots of Pharaoh, of course they were driven by horses. So he had three different chariots. One for going out a nice drive around Nita City Fairfield or going downtown, going out for, a, for a, a nice drive around the city or going for hunting. So he would have this specific chariot and these horses. This is used only for going for a drive or hunting. Another one for battle. The other one after winning the battle. So that's why horses. It's talking about Pharaoh's three chariots, different horses for each chariot and each for a specific use. One for going out and for a drive or hunting, the other for battle, the other after winning the battle. But one thing I bring to your attention as well about Pharaoh, which by the way, the Israelite nations, the Jews, they lived 400 years in Egypt. So imagine 400 years in Egypt, they've learned every single custom rule of, Egypt, of the Egyptian people. You live 40 years in a country, you become part of that country. Imagine 400 years. How many generations came and went? The Pharaoh as the king, when he would, when he would get ready to enter a battle, he would sit on a horse. So when the people of Egypt saw their king Pharaoh sitting on a horse, they said, a war is about to start. When he would sit on a mule, on a donkey, on a mule, that means Pharaoh won that battle. The Lord Jesus, when he came to enter Jerusalem on what we call the Passion Week, we call it Palm Sunday. It is the Sunday before Sunday resurrection. So the Lord is about to enter Jerusalem, engaging in the ultimate battle to overcome Satan and crush his head on Calvary once and for all. What did the Lord sit on? On a mule, not a horse. Why? Because he says, you Israelite people lived 400 years in Egypt and you got to that custom that the king sits on a mule when he wins the battle. I am not just the king, I am the king of all kings. And I came to engage into a battle. But before even entering the battle, I know what the outcome is. I am victorious. That's why I sat on a mule, not a horse. I'm victorious. And whoever holds on to me, you'll be victorious in all of the battles that come your way. I'll make sure of that. I promised you that. So these, the shape of these locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of things like gold. The horses of the old times are the tanks of our times. Military power, military power. So what happened when this fallen star Satan had the key to open the bottomless pit, our intellect, he gave us knowledge. He gave us knowledge to start creating things with it. At the beginning, it looks powerful, but at the end, it will be the reason for our own destruction. You see, God blessed us with a brain. God blessed us with knowledge and wisdom. But when we allowed Satan to control this, he used that knowledge which God already gave us for evil things. He controlled it. So those horses in the golden days are the tanks. Military. Military power. Military power. 
Last, last week we said the locusts are the jet fighters, planes. So the locusts are all the military power are the locusts. Jet fighters, today he's talking about horses, tanks. America, superpower. China, superpower. And everybody is boastful about their military power. They don't realize the enemy is laughing at them. He made them create something that will be the end of them all. So they were horses, tanks. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. Not gold, but like gold. Like gold meaning fake. On their heads what? Were crowns of something like gold. So they are not the real deal. What is the crown here represents? Victory. The Lord Jesus says, He who remains faithful till the end, I will give him the crown of life. Je Revelation 2.10, I will give you the crown of life, meaning the crown of victory. So the crown here is victory, but this victory is fake. It is like gold, but it's not the real gold. It is fake. America went into Iraq. Because they have the tanks, they have the jet fighters, they have the technology which came because of the fallen star that opened the bottomless pit and used people's knowledge and thoughts to create military power to destroy any country they wish and wipe it from the face of this planet. So when America went into Iraq and destroyed Iraq and they came and they clapped for George Bush Jr. I can tell you about these presidents. <laughs> if one day I tell you about Iraq, I come from Iraq by the way, I was born in Iraq. Yeah? George Bush can say whatever he wants to his people and the world and fabricate stories. He cannot. <laughs> Georgie boy, I know you. Iraq had no weapons of mass destruction at all. At all. No weapons of mass destruction. Nothing, 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 none of that. It was just a made up story like the coronavirus and the pandemic, another pandemic on Iraq. He lied. He knew exactly what he was doing. But they are, you see, they are an army. <laughs> He's part of a big circle. He's got to do what he's got to do. I feel sorry for such people. I remember till now. When George Bush put his name to be uh, for the elections to be a president, he was asked, who is your idol, your model, your role model in life? He didn't blink, he said, Jesus Christ. Sorry, George Bush, you lied. If Jesus Christ was your true role model, you wouldn't have done what you did to innocent people in Iraq. You wouldn't have done it. Jesus does not kill like you did. Did anyone speak about 40,000 little angels' children dying every year in Iraq? Did anyone speak about that? Mr. Bush, you've got your billions. You've left them homeless. You've left them orphans. You've destroyed their life for decades and centuries to come. Jesus Christ is your role model? <laughs> Unbelievable. They all play a game, but they're playing with fire. 
40,000 innocent children die from starvation and diseases caused by all those weapons they threw on the land of Iraq. There are parts in Iraq you cannot live in them, you cannot plant nothing, they are poisoned by whatever weaponry they used. Deliberate destruction of Iraq. Again, another agenda. For what? To conquer the world? All of us, we will go to the grave, we will die. Those who wish to live in Mars, on the moon, they will die on the moon and on Mars, they will die. You can fly whichever planet you want to fly to, you will die there. There is a time frame God has put for every human being. You cannot out, you know, you cannot surpass God's authority. You can't. This God, his name is Jesus Christ. Believe me. This has got nothing to do about this uniform that I'm wearing. Believe you me, it's got nothing to do of me being a Christian. Jesus Christ is God, period. Nothing to do with Christianity, nothing to do with Buddhism, Hinduism, Shintoism, Islamism, and they should have been all wasms instead of isms. But anyway, it's got nothing to do with it. It's got to do with the truth. There is one creator of everyone and everything. Please get it. This is not discrimination. This is not jud being judgmental. This is not attacking no one. This is the truth. God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whether we like it or not, accept it or not, believe it or not, one day we will come to this realization and this truth. We will face him. When this spirit leaves the body, I can assure you, you will not see Muhammad. You will not see Buddha. You will not see Krishna and the other 30 million gods in India. None of those gods will come because they are not gods. They are lies and false gods. For God's sake. You will only see one standing calling you, come and tell me, what have you done? His name is Jesus Christ. This is the truth. God, the creator of every human being. He loves us all. He wants everyone to come to know him. Please don't ever say he is the God of the Christians. Don't ever say that. He is God, the God of all. That's why church leaders, you cannot share the same altar with someone who is not Christian and say we all pray to God. You're lying. This is not unity. This is denial of Jesus Christ in the core. You cannot bring all religions and all faiths of the world and you as a Christian pray together for the unity of all the religions. This is satanic. For God's sake, it's satanic. You're denying the true divine God. You are sharing your true divine God with false gods. There is no such thing as the Abrahamic faith. Please. No wonder the Lord is angry. You're telling me the Christians, the Muslims and the Jews share the same God? Excuse me? How? Anybody home? I'll go to the Muslim. I'm not judging. Please, please, I beg you. I'm not judging. I'll go to the Muslim. You know what? If a Muslim person comes and asks for my life, I'll give it. With a big smile on my face. I will put my life under their feet. But if a Muslim guy comes and says, you and I worship the same God, sorry, we don't. I'm sorry, but we don't. Because that's the truth. We don't. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your God? He will say no. You believe in him as a prophet. You believe that he was not even crucified. And the core and the heart of Christianity is, is all about the cross. 
You take the cross out of Christianity, then what are we talking about? And you take Jesus Christ out of being the Son of God and God himself, then please go home. What are you doing here? Muslims deny his divinity and deny his crucifixion. Then your God is not my God. Because Jesus Christ to me is God revealed in the flesh. This Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross for the salvation and the redemption of the entire world. Therefore, your God is not mine. My God is not yours. To the Jews. The Muslims are much better. At least they've acknowledged the coming of, the, of Jesus Christ and they called him prophet. Not bad. But the Jews, they've denied his entire existence. They said he hasn't come yet. We're still waiting for the Messiah. And you believe in Yahweh? Which Yahweh? Your, your Yahweh is Jesus Christ, my dear Jewish friend. Your Yahweh is Jesus Christ. The Yahweh of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ of the New Testament. He's come and he's going to come again. In Israel, there was a rabbi, uh, his name, what was his name? Father Isaac, do you remember? This was written in the newspaper everywhere. They shut it up. In Israel, there was this rabbi over a hundred years old. Now to them, he was a prophet of God sent to them in the end of times. They worshiped this man. He was a holy man of God. And he used to prophesy about things and they would happen. So other rabbis and people from Israel and outside of Israel, they seek his wisdom, his advice and his counsel. They would come and sit at his feet. Over a hundred years of age passed away not long ago. He said to them, I will write the name of the Messiah that you guys are waiting for to come. I will write his name and I'm telling you, he will come again very soon. This guy is a Jew to the core. The Messiah came and spoke to me. The Messiah came and spoke to me and he said, I am coming on my second coming on my second return very soon. I'm on the way back again. And he gave me a sign when you see this happening, my coming. The second coming is at hand. I'm knocking at the door. He wrote the name of the Messiah who said to him, I will be coming again. Not I haven't come, I'll come again. He said, I'll write it. When I die, please open the envelope and reveal it to the whole world. When he passed away, this rabbi, this hacham, when he passed away, they opened the envelope and to their shocking surprise, the one who is on his second return, his name is Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now this is coming from a Jew, not a Christian. It's stuck. Yitzhak Kaduri, correct. Yitzhak Kaduri, go and Google it. Was that a made up story? This guy is a Jew to the core, an Orthodox Jew. Yitzhak Kaduri. He said, the one who is coming on his second return soon, they opened it, they got the shock of their life. It is the one who our forefathers crucified on Calvary over 2,000 years. They wrote it in the newspaper. The government came and took it all and shut it all. On their foreheads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like the faces of men. Crowns, victory, but they are like gold. So their victories are lies, are false. America went into Iraq and they said we were victorious. But what kind of a victory is this? When a plane gets hijacked, can you, can you release those hijacked people in the plane? With all your technology, you can't do nothing. 
So your victory is like gold, but it's not the genuine victory because the only true victory you can ever receive from anyone, you can only receive it from Jesus Christ. There is no superpower. There is no power in the entire existence can give you true victory except Jesus. He is the true gold. All the other victories are like gold, fake victories. And their faces were like the faces of men. These locusts, horses on their heads, crowns, like, like something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. Now, why the faces of men? Because these locusts came out of the smoke that came out of the bottomless pit. Now, the bottomless pit, we said, is your intellect, knowledge. Now, the face of man is the image of God. God created us in His image and likeness. So what is God? Knowledge. So His knowledge He placed in us. That's why He called it is the faces of men. So we have the knowledge of God. But since they denied God's seal on their forehead, they rejected God's seal, i.e. rejected God's knowledge. Satan infiltrated this intellect and filled it with smoke, lies, and gave people knowledge of lies to go and build weapon and of mass destruction. First, to lie to them and say, look what you've achieved. Look what a great achievement you've done. But at the end, he will laugh at them and he'll say, this was all lies. What you build is what's going to destroy you in the very end lies they had hair like women's hair oh hello habibi they had hair like women's hair now with all love and respect to my beloved daughters don't get me wrong but you know a woman is attractive when she's got a long hair and every time this beautiful girl that has a long hair, you see her always going right with it and left with it and fiddling with it and playing with it. She's talking to people. Oh, yeah, did you know? Oh, yeah, did you see? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Was that good? <laughs> I'm not LGBT, okay, so please. <laughs> they had the faces of men, beautiful. The image of God is beautiful. Since we are created in the image and the likeness of God, then men, the image of God, is talking about beauty. Now, this is technology. Locust came out. They created jet fighters, tanks, weaponry, technology, internet, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Nicknock, Wok Wok. All these technologies, they are beautiful. They've got a face of a man. The image of God is beautiful. So it's talking about beauty. The hair of a woman, attraction. The hair of a woman is attractive. You could, if you look at someone from, from their back with a long hair, You'll run, you're thinking, this is what a beautiful girl this must be. Look at the hair. And then you tap on their shoulder and to your shock and surprise is a guy, not a woman. <laughs> so when you look at the hair, you straight away, you get attracted. I'm talking serious. <laughs> and also the woman's hair is not only attraction, but the woman's hair is her, is her glory, respect, is her glory. The man's glory is the bead, and you're probably going to laugh at this, but that's the truth. I'm talking biblical. The, the man's glory is the bead. The woman's glory is the hair. You see, when the Lord Jesus was sitting at this Pharisee's house, Simon, the Pharisee, this sinner, this woman who was a sinner, came from behind the Lord. With her tears, she washed his feet. With her hair, she wiped those feet. Now, didn't she have a handkerchief? She would have. What about with her dress? She could have wiped the feet with her own dress. But no, she chose the hair. Why? 
deliberate to say to the Lord Jesus, my honor, my glory, I put at your feet. Because you are my glory. You are the crown of my head, not the hair, you. So the most glorious things in me, I put it under your feet to gain your glory, Lord. So the hair represents attraction and glory, respect. But look at the end. And their teeth were like lion's teeth. Oh. At the beginning, horses, and they had a crown on their heads, something like gold, fake, fake triumphant, fake victory. So it's talking about victory, horses, victory, crowns like gold, victory. And then it talks about they had a faces of men, beauty, and hair like women, attraction and glory. But at the end, the teeth are the lions, devouring. You see, when these people denied the seal of God, denied the knowledge of God, denied to walk in the Lord's path, Satan took over. He infiltrated the bottomless pit because he's got the key to open your head and enter your thought. He entered the human's thoughts, those who rejected Christ's knowledge. He fed them with his own knowledge, which is nothing but smoke, darkness, poison, suffocation. And he led them to create technologies, to create weaponry, to create internets, iPhones and galaxies and all these androids and all these technologies at the beginning they are victory horses because technology is power I can conquer the world and the human race I gain power look at me what a great achiever I am Elon Musk doesn't want to sleep because he wants to go and live somewhere in outer space this is not enough place to dwell in. I'm bored. I need something else. That is technology power, horses. And then technology also looks beautiful. Men's faces, it looks beautiful. With a press of a button, I can send a message anywhere in the world. Poor our parents in the golden days to send one message across the, the globe, it would take months. I go and write on a piece of paper and get out the envelope and lick it with my tongue and seal the envelope. And I go to the post office and I buy a sticker for 10, 10 cent and I stick it on there with a lick on my mouth as well. And then I either ship it or put it in a plane with a propeller plane. After three months, when I was dead, they received my letter too late. Too late. And then the letter got lost. <laughs> now, my beloved, post office is out of work. They're, they're unemployed. I grabbed the iPhone. Good the luck. Ah, the iPhone. And I pressed the button. Someone in America, instantaneously, they received the message. I want to talk to them. I pick the phone. I don't need to go somewhere and get the cable taken out of this and put in there and then speak to the operator. And please, I want to speak to Iraq or to Argentina or to Italy or to America. No, at home in my bed, pick the phone. I ring them up and then I say, I want to see you. I miss you. Open the camera with a press of button. Isn't that beautiful? That's the face of men. The image of God is beautiful. Technology looks beautiful, but it's poison. Who drove people to do this? Satan, the one who holds the key to the bottomless pit. This is Satan. Ever since iPhones came, the human race changed. The mark of the beast is not just a vaccine. I spoke about this at the beginning of this pandemic. Some people misunderstood. I said, do you think the vaccine is, gonna, is the mark of the beast? Our brains have been washed long time ago, my beloveds. It's not the vaccine. The vaccine is just one of those things added to the mark of the beast. But it is part of the mark of the beast. 100%.
Technology is beautiful. And then it's the hair of a woman, attraction. Boys and girls, let's see what I shall find on the YouTube. A lot of attractions. What kind of attractions are you looking for on YouTube, on Facebook, on TikTok, on Netflix? And so many channels. Staying up till late. What are you watching? It's very attractive. It's very colorful. You see all kinds of things. Men, women, everything. And half, half. You see everything. Whatever you want, it's very attractive. It's very attractive. But the teeth are the teeth of a lion, destructive. It will kill you. It will kill you. You know, before the telephone was one of those that so if, imagine if it was an emergency uh, you're dead before you dial the number you are rushing and you're wait, waiting for this thing dial to go back again and, and then and then it advanced it became one of those with a cord but the cord was about 10 meters long so you can go anywhere at home but it was with a press of a button and then they came up with these phones, like mobile ones, but they were the old, old, you know, Nokia and what was the other one? A strawberry, whatever it was called, I don't know. Hmm? Motorola, whatever they are. See, those phones, if, if you can use them, use them, please, because those phones, you can't have YouTube, you can't have nothing on them, you can't have WhatsApp, you can't have Viber, you can't have none of that. Or, or, rumble mumble whatever they are I don't know use them go back to the old technology nowadays it's whatsapp viba and all the likes and you put pictures and you do things it's very attractive but at the end it's got the teeth of a lion how many lives have been destroyed because of technology how many families have been destroyed because of technology family members are no longer talking to one another everybody's busy at home, each one in their own room, send messages to one another. Please come out of your room, sit at the table, face mom, face dad, face your brother, face your sister, face your family member and talk. You need to interact with one another. We are human beings created by the Almighty God to have a social life. We were never intended to live in a box out of concrete, bricks and mortar and glass. We need to interact. Do you know what the intention behind this little game they played? There's other big games coming, but this little game two years ago, the main reason, it wasn't just jabbing people with poison. No, no, no. But the main one, please be careful. The main one was to separate people from one another. That was the main reason and they won. They succeeded in a big time. People fell into this trap. Before the pandemic, you'd have a meeting, everybody would come. Now they want to do it through Zoom, through technology, the poison of Satan. Yeah, well, we can meet and we can see each other. I'm at home. I feel tired. I don't feel like leaving home. It's too cold. It's too hot. It's raining. It's thundering. You know what? Just open the camera and we can see each other. What's the difference? No, it is all the difference. This is the reason Satan does not want you to interact with your fellow human being. They, he wants you to live alone in your room alone because if you gonna follow Satan's path I can assure you after one year two year three year four year five years you're finished 
you do not want to see no one anymore. You will stay at home and you will go through depression without even realizing it. And the next time you wake up, you'll think this is the normal life. See that, that Hitler number two, Klaus Schwab, he said, you will, there is no more the old norm. Now you are, you need to adjust to the new norm. Listen, mate, get out of my sight. You and your new norm. I am, I am Iraqi baby. I come from the Middle East. I need to speak and I'm loud and I need to speak in front of people. I want to see your faces. You don't come and see me. I don't see you through the camera. This camera, leave it to Satan. I want to see your face in the church. And those who are at home, please come to church. Don't stay at home. Come to church. Don't fall for the attraction, the woman's hair. Come to church and have your meeting face to face. Family. Even if you can do it once a week, do it. The whole family sits at the table and eats together. Not each one drive through and take away. No, no, no. Sit at home. Today, I'll drop everything. I don't care. I'll drop everything. Today, I'm sitting at the table with my parents, with my brothers, with my sisters, with my family members. Today, I'm sitting. We will eat together at home. Not outside. At home. But together. You're busy other times. Make one day. One hour, two hours. Give it to the family. Don't ever let Satan deceive you. Step on him in this gorgeous name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This guy is stunning, believe me. You ask me, I'll tell you, he is gorgeous. He is breathtaking. He is stunning. He is amazing. He is, he is it. One stop man, not shop, man. One stop man. Whatever you need. You say, I'm hungry. He said, I am the living bread who descended from heaven. Come and eat. You say, I, I'm thirsty, I am the living water, come and drink. You say, I'm lost, I am the good shepherd, I'll find you. You say, I'm dead, I am the life and the resurrection. You say, I'm weak, I am the all-powerful God. I am the Almighty. I can change darkness into light and I can bring out of the grave life. I can do the impossible. My name is Jesus. Do you want to befriend me? Give me your hand. Let's walk together. Let's walk together. Step on Satan. Grab Jesus' hand. Say, Lord, I'm weak. Every time I let go of your hand, you don't. Every time I walk away, you don't. Every time I slide, you don't. Every time I deny you, you don't. Every time I fall, you don't. You don't, Lord. This is the truth. Jesus exists. It's not a myth. It's not a story. It's not just a book I read. Please, I beg you. Jesus is it. There is no other God but Jesus Christ of Nazareth the one who was born in Bethlehem in a manger over 2,000 years ago is it and I put my neck on the line they can come and chop this head and detach it from this body this is God period nothing to do with Christianity he's God So don't tell me you are Catholic, you're Orthodox, you're Protestant. This is God. You need to come and have a true encounter with this God. You need to come and have a true encounter with this God. <sighs> Technology. At the end, it's a lion, a devouring one. Please, use it wisely. I know we can't do without it, but you know what? 
use it in a sensible, reasonable way, in a mature way. If you want to have a Facebook, put the Lord Jesus as your profile photo, not you. And send a message to the whole world, say, I belong to this gorgeous man. And don't sit on there for hours talking and arguing, even about your faith, don't argue. You need to come to church. You need to pray in the house of the Lord, not just sit at home and talk about the Lord. You need to come and receive him in the body and the blood and the truth. You must come and participate as the family of God in his house called the church. Holy Mass service Sunday, you must come. Bible preaching, I must hear my daddy's word, I must come. You see, by coming to the church alone, it's a blessing. I can assure you it's a blessing alone. Even if you understood nothing from this good looking bishop, even if you gained nothing, but by leaving your house, coming to the Lord's house, in this trip, you've been blessed by the Lord because you chose to come to his house. You've adhered to his calling and you said, yes, Lord, I'm coming. This is the Holy Spirit calling everyone, but not everyone came, but blessed are those who come. Blessed are those who come. And blessed are those who are watching at home. They cannot come physically, but they have given up on their time and watched through that camera. Blessed are you. But if you have the opportunity and you don't come, then the Lord will question you at the end. I gave you the chance to come to my house. Why didn't you come? I was waiting to bless you. You rejected it. It's not about, let's go and see who's talking. No, I'm coming to the church because of you, Lord. I want to love you. I want to be with you. I want to be blessed by you. I choose to come to your house, Lord, because I love you. This is the love you gave me from the beginning. I'm giving it back to you, even if it's a little drop. But I'm giving it back to you, Lord. So thank you for coming. And thank you for watching. And I pray that you continue coming. And I pray that you speak to other people and be disciples of Christ and bring other people to the house of the Lord. Be the disciples of the Lord. Be the preachers of the Lord. Go and tell people are in your circle. We need to go to church. We are not going anywhere else but the house of the Lord. Leave technology alone. It is poisonous if you chase it, if you go after it fully. It is poisonous. Use it for work. Use it sensibly. Use it responsibly. But do not let it to engulf you and control you and enslave you. Do not. It looks attractive, but at the end, it's the teeth of a lion. It will devour you. I have to stop. I was going to finish at 8. It's 8.30. I've been talking for an hour and a half. You must have a headache now. Never? Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Drive your petrol car until it falls apart. Don't get a battery. They can take that production and stick it on their forehead. I'll ring the king of Saudi Arabia. I say, brother, can you please reduce the oil price? <laughs> That's two dollars something now. Can you please make it dollar twenty? No, 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 no. We have one king, his name is Jesus Christ. I'll call him, I'll call him. And drive your Commodore V8, mate. Don't worry about petrol. It's not gonna affect no ozone, no mozone. Climate change, that's a lie, leave it alone. Oh, between us, the current government of Australia will go full steam ahead to make sure no more fighting about climate change because they're going to implement it ASAP. Well done, Labour Party. 
sorry, I don't know how to put it in a, in a, in a very, as much as nice as possible way, but they're lying. What climate change? They show you footages in the mainstream media, which is another, another lie, as they place there deliberately. They show you some floods happening there and some storms happening there and some cyclones happening there. There's a channel about, uh, ge uh, what do they call it, geography or something? National Geographic. Th they took a footage of National Geographic <laughs> and they put it under climate change. <laughs> Maybe that footage is probably 30 years old. And they planted some seeds, cloud seeding, and they said, oh, look at the rain that came in Sydney. Two months has been raining. Habibi, stop the planes flying. There's no rain. Beautiful weather in Sydney. Leave Sydney alone. I'll call Jesus if you don't stop. And I'll ask him this time to make you rain in a different way. Do you want to see what Jesus can do? Hmm? Do you? I pray from the bottom of my heart and I ask you all to join together for every evil agenda planned against the Lord and his church to be put to shame. For every evil agenda planned against the Lord and his church to be put to shame. For every evil agenda planned against the Lord and his church to be put to shame. From e for every person that is seeking evil in this world to be put to shame. And more so Satan who is behind all this evil. Satan, may the Lord put you to shame one more time. In Jesus' mighty name, I rebuke you, Satan. Get lost. Now, don't use technology too much. Next time you want to talk to someone, a relative, a friend, go and knock at their door. Don't call them. Sit in your car and go and knock at their door and say, I chose to see you face to face. And then take your cousin and your friend to church, not to the club. You're listening? Clubs, no good. No good. Very attractive. It's women's hair. All kind of colors. Come to church, my beloved. All right. Um, just, um, actually, I'll ask. My dear Nora, I'm sorry I've kept you there for too long, huh? I'll, uh, I'll ask our beloved Nora to say a hymn for us, to sing a hymn for us, and then I'll, a small announcement, and then we'll let you go. Amen to that. Thank you very much, my dear Nora. What an angelic voice. Um, just a quick announcement before we uh, uh, call it a day. This Sunday, my beloveds, we, um, we will not be having the English service, which is normally every Sunday at 6 p.m. It is only for this Sunday coming, we will not have the Holy Mass service in English. The reason being, because this Sunday, um, we have another church service in the morning, that's mainly in Assyrian, uh, our language. Um, which starts at 9 a.m. So at the end of the morning service, which starts at 9 a.m., straight after we'll be having a bap baptismal service. For <laughs> Sorry, right, right. that was just to wake you up. Mm. So straight after the um, the English uh, the Assyrian service in the morning, we will be having a baptism service for eight adults uh, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, we're inviting you all to come uh, this Sunday at 9 a.m. Participate in the, partake in the, in the morning service. Um, and then straight after we'll be uh, having that baptism for eight adults receiving the Lord Jesus. 
Um, this is an absolute uh, glorious day and it's great news. Uh, the Holy Bible says, for one soul to repent and come back to the Lord, uh, heaven rejoices, my beloved, for one. So uh, we are gonna have eight, not one. It's, that's on, it's a one, one-off occasion. During lockdown, we probably had over 100 people being baptized during lockdown. So the Lord Jesus has his own ways of doing mighty works even in difficult times. When you let the Lord Jesus work, he will show his greatness, his mightiness, his love, mercy, and compassion. He will come to you and give you the wings of an eagle and make you soar in the heaven of all heavens, my beloved. So I invite you, my beloved, we invite you to attend this Sunday's Holy Mass service at 9 a.m. And then straight after we'll have the um, baptism of our beautiful souls coming to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Um, so the evening service will not be held this Sunday. Also during um, this Sunday's Holy Mass service, uh, we will have uh, all those beautiful souls that are coming forth to be ordained as deacons and also as priests. So in August, on the 28th of August, the Feast of the Holy Mother Mary, uh, we are ordaining, uh, I think, nine or ten and deacons. And in November, God willing, we're ordaining two priests uh, to join Father Isaac and Father Sargon. So the family of priests is increasing. We thank the Lord, and we ask the Lord to send us more priests. So those beautiful people, they will be present with us this Sunday. So everybody gets to know who they are. Uh, being ordained to being deacons and priests. And if there is anyone that the Lord has put in their heart, you know, they, wanna, they feel like there's an eagerness, they want to get close to the altar, they want to serve the Lord on the altar, they can approach us anytime and we can talk to them and see what the Lord's will is. And if anybody wants to become a monk or a nun, also the door is open for being a monk and a nun. Life is not just about being married. Marriage is beautiful, but also living with the Lord and walking away from the, this world and giving everything to the Lord is also beautiful, my beloveds. So if anybody is, um, the Holy Spirit is uh, talking to them, you know, from within that give your life to Christ and be a monk or a nun, please approach us, let's talk about it. Maybe it's the Lord's will and with time, things will be revealed to you in more clarity. Uh, may the Lord Jesus bless you all, guide you and protect you. And now if I could ask everyone to stand for the finale prayer, if you don't mind. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, my beloveds. God bless.